Oh, here we here we go. And um, it's over to you, Madam Chair. Before we proceed, um, Mr. Morrison, should we ask the other applicant, um, Mr. Quinn, I believe it is, if he also wants to proceed, if he Ab doesn't ab want to. Absolutely, go, go ahead, the floor is yours, Madam Chair. So Mr. Quinn, are you on? Uh, this is Peter Alter. I'm uh, okay. the attorney for the applicant in this matter. And do you want to proceed with the hearing um, knowing that you have to have four affirmative votes and there's only four commissioners here tonight? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Then um, the public hearing first application is application number 6257-22, special exemption section 3.5. Point one a five commercial vehicles to allow a commercial vehicle not in compliance with section 3.5.5 a of the zoning regulations to be parked on residential property located at 89 Prospect Street. The applicant is Christine Rossini. I think the usual procedure here is um, Mr. Morrison could give a staff report. Um, Ms. Then um, Christina Orsini will let us know what she would like us to know about the application. And then we'll proceed with people for, we'd like to speak uh, for the application, then against the application. Uh, we can ask questions of Mr. Morrison and any of the other commentators. So Mr. Morrison, you wanna give oh, us your staff report? All right. Um, Let me know if I have to do anything else. Because oh, oh, okay, so, so, uh, to start off the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, public hearing for um, February 28th, 2022. Uh, we have the application number 6257-22 and it's a uh, property address number 89 Prospect Street. Owner is Christina Orsini who's also the applicant. And the request is for a special exception to allow commercial, a commercial vehicle to be stored on the subject property. Um, the vehicle is not in compliance with the section 3.5.1 AF zoning regulations. And the zoning regulations do allow for a uh, for a special exception. So uh, 89 Prospect Street is located in the residential zone. And on December 28th, 2021, this office received a telephone call alleging that property known as 89 Prospect Street and located at the corner of Prospect and Harris Hill Road has a commercial vehicle parked on the residential property. On December 30th, 2021, a field inspection was conducted from the roadway and a vehicle fitting the description of a commercial vehicle was observed and photographed in the driveway. On December 31st, 2021, a notice of violation was sent out by a certified and regular mail. And the record show that the certified mail was received on January 7th, 2022. Uh, to the property owner explaining the alleged violation. Enclosed with the notice of violation was a form entitled Commercial Vehicle Information. This form is designed to obtain from the owner any information that would assist in determining whether the subject vehicle can be declared a commercial vehicle as set out in Article 2 of the zoning regulations. It required the owner to fill out and return the form to this office so that staff may decide whether or not a permit is required for the continued storage of this vehicle. The form was completed and returned to the office and staff examined the form and determined that this vehicle exceeds the requirements of 3.5.5A, namely uh, the height of the vehicle is eight foot six inches as against eight feet, uh, allowed by the regulations. Lettering is on three sides as against two sides allowed. 
also lettering on left and right sides exceeded the 12 square feet allowed as each side has lettering of 16.5 square feet. The vehicle is parked outdoors and um, staff did speak to the owner by telephone and advised her that because the vehicle has exceeded three of the requirements of section 3.5.5A, she would be required to seek a special exception in order to have the vehicle remained on the property. And it is customary, uh, Madam Chairman, for um, staff to stay the enforcement. In, in such a case, um, staff would stay the enforcement uh, pending the outcome of the, um, of the special exception uh, application. Uh, but the, and, and so the owner was advised that failing to obtain a special exception will require her to cease and desist from parking the vehicle on the property within 10 days of conclusion of this DBA hearing. So um, a check of the records did not show any previous record was granted for this property. Um, an application was received on January 18, 2022 for a special exception in accordance with section 3.5.1b which sets the guideline for the board's consideration and condition of approval if the board so desires. The applicant has stated hardship as follows. The employee of Dunright Construction resides on the property and uses the truck on, day, on a daily basis. This vehicle is his only means of transportation. In addition, Dunright specializes in emergency repair work um, in the case of a fire, storm, accident, or any uh, such um, occurrence. So therefore, he's on a 24-7 call. Today, this office, this office has received three written support for the applicant. Um, and I'll read them in individual. I'll read them as I go along. So the first uh, written support that we got is from uh, Pelino Silvestri. And um, this came in on February 21st, 2022. And uh, it reads as follows. For the February 28th, 2022 planning, planning and Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, this should be just zoning board of appeals meeting. Uh, two planning and zoning committee members and members of the community. Again, this is just um, this is ZBA and not planning and zoning committee. My name is Pelino Silvestri, and I own property located at 15 Harris Hill Road, which is across the street from Christina Orsini. I wanted to take a moment to speak regarding the matter in question tonight. That is the special exception being requested by Christina to be allowed to park a commercial vehicle on a residential property, not meeting the requirements of section 3.5.5A of the zoning regulations. First, let me say that as a longtime resident of Weathersfield myself, uh, currently residing in Colchester, Connecticut, I'm glad that there are such regulations designed to protect the community. I'm equally as glad that there are exceptions to those regulations for situations like this one. That said, I'm in favor of granting this exception to, to Chris. We are talking about a work ban that is the primary source for transportation to and from work, while some of us work in the same location daily. That is not the case for tradespeople. We have come to appreciate throughout this pandemic. It is more common for tradespeople to be granted the use of a work van as opposed to having to use their own personal vehicle to return to their place of business to pick up a van and then drive to the work site for several reasons. It eliminates the need for the tradesperson to purchase and maintain a separate vehicle, specifically to go to and from their place of business. 
This saves the tradesperson a great deal of expense involved in the maintenance of owning a personal vehicle. The tradesperson can move, can more quickly and efficiently be dispatched to work assignments directly from their homes, as opposed to having to be dispatched from their place of business. This saves time, money, and for all concerned, and is ultimately better for the environment. If you have ever had to wait for service, you understand what I'm talking about. From what I observe, the vehicle is not present in the driveway for the majority of the day, that is during regular working hours. There appears to be noticeable issue with noise. There, there appears to be no noticeable issue, I beg your pardon, um, with noise from this vehicle. In addition, the van does not appear to pose any obstruction to the roadway. Chris has been a member in good standing of this community for all of her adult life. She has been a long time member of the Chamber of Commerce, including volunteering as their president during the pandemic. It is my understanding that Chris also earned the designation Member of the Year Award during her service on the Chamber Board. Chris continues to be a leader in this community, working with the Esposo Funeral Chapel. The, the, the Esposo Funeral Chapel has partnered with Food Share of Connecticut to collect donations for money and food to help those in need in our community. Chris has volunteered her time for this worthy cause for many years, in addition to currently serving on the board of directors of the Weathersfield Mayor's Charity Ball and Weathersfield Don Dollars for Scholars. I understand the need to balance the town regulations with the need of our neighbors. Chris and her family have been and continue to be good neighbors to this community and my family and me. Thank you for your time and consideration as you contemplate granting the special exception to Chris. And it's signed by Felino Silvestri, 286 McDonald Road, Colchester CT 06415, and 15 Harris Hill Road, Weathersfield CT 06109. So that's the first um, written. Uh, approval uh, support, I should say, that came in for um, for the applicant. Uh, the second one that I have is from um, is from Haley Escovitz and Matt Hoburg fell of 83 Prospect Hill, I'm sorry, of 83 Prospect Street. And um, it reads as follows. It came in on Thursday, February 24th, 2022 at 8.36 p.m. And it says, to whom it may concern, as the immediate neighbors to Christina and Drew, we would like the record to show that we have no objection to a commercial vehicle being parked on their residential property. We are unable to attend the hearing this coming Monday. However, please allow this communication to stand as a vote in favor for, of Christina and Drew. Thank you, Haley Escovitz and Matt Oberfell, 83 Prospect Street. And the third uh, written support is from uh, Maria Ciotta LaRose of 68 Harris Hill Road. That one was received on Sunday, February 27, 2022 at 7.04 p.m. And it says, Dear Mr. Morrison, my name is Maria Ciotta LaRose. 
and my family has lived at 68 Harris Hill Road since 1970. My brother, Anthony, still resides at this address and my sister and I are his co-trustees. I personally spend at least six days per week at my family home for various reasons, but mainly to keep my disabled brother company and see to his various needs. I am writing today regarding the above referenced application, which seems to have an impact on our neighborhood. I contacted Christina Orsini once, once I saw the sign posted on her lawn to ask about the purpose of the upcoming zoning hearing. Please be advised that the Seattle family has absolutely no objection to this application. In fact, we were quite surprised that it was even necessary. I have discussed this matter with my siblings and we are all in agreement. We thank you for your consideration in this matter and are hopeful that Christina will prevail. Should you have any questions or like additional information, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you, Maria M. Chiote LaRousse. So that's the, um, the three uh, written support that we got for, for the applicant. A fourth came in by way, a fourth uh, support came in by way of telephone call. This was received at 3.30 p.m. on February 24th, 2022. And that's from Sue Fosco of 34 Harris Hill Road, who says that she is in support, she's in full support of the vehicle being parked in the owner's driveway, as she sees no adverse impact that this would present. Uh, we had not received any adverse um, response to this application until today. Uh, at about 3.10 p.m. when I received the call. Uh, the caller was anonymous. Um, however, he says that he could see his truck from, uh, he could see the truck from across when he is in his front yard, he could see the truck and that um, he thought that it, um, it was not in keeping with the residential character of the of the um, the neighborhood, and um, he would not like to see this um, special exception being granted. He did not give me his address. He said that he did not receive a um, neighbor notification. Um, um, I'm not sure whether he was within the 300 feet radius because he he, he refused to give me an address. Um, so. Um, that was pretty much what we had um, against the application. And uh, judging from the voice, you know, um, it appears that that was the same person that made the complaint uh, about the vehicle. So um, staff have reviewed the application for the special exception and have found that the property has limited land space for parking of this vehicle. And the, the proposed location may um, help to conceal this vehicle from public view along Prospect Street and not create a sightline issue. Also, staff sees no adverse impact arising from the parking of this vehicle in the proposed location. So, and um, attached with the staff report is the zoning regulation section three, 0.5.5 and the commercial vehicle information. There's a support from the application, support for the application and th those two I had received um, at the time of writing. I got, I got the third one today. So um, Madam Chairman, that is my staff report regarding this application. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Do any of the commissioners have questions for Mr. Morrison at this time? Um, Matt, no, um, Charles, um, when you said there's no adverse, um, you didn't see any adverse impact. 
you're talking about safety, sight lines, and things like that. Correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Because right, uh, I, I visited the site and um, they have proposed, um, and you may see that photograph that I sent with your packet yeah, yeah. that um, the vehicle will be parked on a, on a paved surface um, toward the side of the house, which is the, the house. The house actually fronts on um, Harris Hill Road. Right. So no, I just I just wanted to make sure that I understood be, it was yes. it was averse reactions were no sight. No, line no problems, sight. Line okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. I, I think next we'll go to Christine Orsini if you'd like to tell us anything else about the application that you want us to know. Um, first and foremost, it's my first time ever doing something like this, and I truly appreciate. Um, the opportunity that you're giving me to kind of talk about what we're doing here. I appreciate all of your time and all the time that Mr. Morrison has invested in helping me through this process. Um, he is correct when we did discuss that this would be a hardship if we can't park the vehicle here um, because it is his only means of transportation. And it would mean that I would have to bring him to job, you know, to, to get the, the truck it, it, I mean, you understand what I'm saying. There would be more of a, of a hassle for us. And especially if he gets a call at, you know, two in the morning, um, I really don't want to be driving to Hamilton Street in Hartford to drop him off to, to get the vehicle. So it would be very much appreciated. I mean, we apologize, not realizing initially that it was a, po a problem parking. It was visible when he initially got the truck. And it was, and we do apologize for that because we didn't realize that it was a problem. But after speaking with Mr. Morrison, we seem to have figured out a way that we can just kind of tuck it in along the house. And um, where, when you look at it from Prospect Street, you don't see it at all. I mean, you really kind of have to look for it. Um, and I'm, and I'm glad that my neighbors don't seem to have a problem with it. I don't know who this person is. That it seems to be within their sight line. I just can't seem to figure out from here where that is. Um, and, and I'm sorry that it, that it bothers this person. I feel bad, but um, I mean, I don't know. Do you have any questions for me? I don't, I don't know really what to say about this. Um, why don't we go, commissioners go in order. So um, Sandra, Sandra, do you wanna go? You have to unmute. No, you don't have any questions? Oh, okay, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Christina, you've lived in this house since 2012, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and then the truck came in when? About five months ago. So where was the truck before? He didn't have a job there. He just got employed by Dunright five months ago. And the condition was he'd have to bring home a large truck to park in your driveway. Correct. Well, actually, it wasn't. A, it, it was more along the lines of we're giving you a company vehicle to take home with you and keep with you because you're on call 24 seven. That was the condition of his employment. Anything else, Sandra? No, I'm all set. Okay. Matt, have any questions? I don't have any at this time, no. Okay. Dan? Uh, just one. The plan is, is for the truck to always be parked in that corner next to the house. Yes, Correct. absolutely. Yep. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I have a, a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, so where the truck is parked, where you propose to park the truck, mm -hmm. you have th three other vehicles plus a vehicle that is covered. So you have four other vehicles on that driveway. Is that correct? Correct. All right. So is there going to be a car parked in front of the truck then at night? Yes, my, my car would be parked in front of that. Okay. okay. Does the Dunright uh, truck have backup alarms on it? When it backs up? I, I can't answer that. I don't know. 
I think it has to by law. So it has to. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I, most trucks do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm yep. not, I don't know. So yep. if, if, if the driver of the truck, the mm -hmm. whoever, the occupant of your home that drives the truck has to take it out at night, what one car will have to be moved. The truck will have to be moved. The car will have to be put back in. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then when he returns, he's It'd got the same, the same, same game thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. I am concerned about the, the noise level with the backup alarms on the truck. It doesn't have so one. I just no. He says that, it that doesn't just, have one. It doesn't have any. That's on that size. Unusual. That's it. Um, so though all those vehicles, none of them are owned or driven by this person that drives the Dunright truck. There's no one is my son's. No. Well, okay. So he drives the truck on all his personal errands. No, that's, his, take, oh, that's his only vehicle. He'll take my car for personal use. His the truck is for um, work only. Okay. So the truck is for work only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all right. I just I'm just reading the application. I'm trying to answer you know, look at everything. It says that's his only means of transportation is the truck. To and from work, yes. Okay, to and from work. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions for? Could you clarify the backup alarms? I believe a vehicle that size should have one. I mean, if it's backing up, people have to know for safety. According to, it's under the weight limit and it doesn't have to have one. Is that what you're saying? Doesn't sound right. Will there often be? I, mean, I suppose the uh, the the way. If, I don't know if. Okay. I guess I don't know if it doesn't have one. It doesn't have one. I can't answer. I don't know what to yeah. tell you about that. I okay. don't know. Anything under fifteen thousand pounds, you don't need. It. Oh. I guess any 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 truck under fifteen thousand pounds, you don't need a backup alarm. Okay, maybe some of them just have them for they want them. Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully this works in our favor that we're not making any noise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd rather I don't want to hear it either. Yeah. No, I I don't think people want to hear them. So. <laughs> any other questions for the applicant? Nope. Is there anybody else on? with us tonight that wants to speak either for or against? Okay. Okay, no other questions then. Do we? Mr. Morrison, can I ask you a question? Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Morrison, sure. Sure. I think, can you sure. ask, ask a question? Okay, right, I haven't yeah. done this before either, so. Oh, good. <laughs> Um, Mr. Morrison, I was just wondering, did you send the committee the photograph that I sent you when I stood on Prospect Street looking directly at my house, like where the garages are on the side that shows that you can't even see the truck when it's backed in? Did you send them? Did you have an opportunity to send them yes. that? Yes, yes, I, I did. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And then the, from Harris Hill, how it's tucked in all the way? Okay, everyone saw that? Okay. Yeah, we have we have pictures of, of what it looked like when you parked it in front of the driveway, in front right. of the garage, rather. Right, okay. And now your proposal is to park it to the side. Right, right, because right. one of the conversations that Mr. Morrison and I had, he thought that that could work. Mm -hmm. Are there often ladders on it? I think it, you know, the, no. as far as no. someone being concerned about it. The, no, no ladders are on it. Well, in the photos, there were ladders. Yeah, on. Yes, I, yes, I, I've seen ladders. It's, ladders it's, right. That was just for one job. It doesn't usually have ladders on it. Mm -hmm. But if you want, we can make sure that he doesn't have any ladders on it when it comes into our driveway. Okay. All right, before we close the hearing, anyone else have a question? Right. Once we close the hearing, um, Mrs. Orsini, the there are no 
you can't speak anymore. <laughs> Is that correct, <laughs> Mr. Morrison? Just to make sure. All right, so um, I'm sure a lot of people would like to hear that. <laughs> all the testimony is, is done. So, all right, so we're going to close the hearing. All right, thank you again. Motion everybody. to close the hearing. Dan, motions close motion the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Second. I'll second. <laughs> all in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Right. okay. So, <laughs> the next one. Right. So we're going to move on to our second hearing application number 6258-22 variance from section 3.6 to allow a standalone ATM kiosk 15 feet from front property boundary as against 25 feet required location 1862 Berlin Turnpike. The applicant is TKO Installations Incorporated care of Christopher Chris Quinn. Mr. Morrison, do you have a staff report for us? Yes, Madam Chairman. Um, I have a staff report here. Application number 6258-22, 1862 Berlin Turnpike, applicant TKO Installations, Inc., uh, care of uh, Chris Quinn. And the application is for variance from section 5.4, uh, dimensional and area requirement to allow a ATM kiosk 15 feet from the front property boundary as against 25 feet required. And this is in the residential, I'm sorry, the regional commercial zone. Mm -hmm. So uh, this department received queries regarding the establishment of uh, standalone um, ATM. And um, it was suggested to the applicants that an application be made as required to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Also, the fact that um, it's being proposed to be only 15 feet from the front property line, then um, uh, that necessitated the application for uh, variance uh, before this board. Um, So on February 7, 2022, this office received an application for the variance. The records did not show any previous variance uh, being grant granted for this um, property uh, regarding front yard. There's a variance that was approved uh, some time ago for parking spaces for previous business, but not for the front yard uh, setback. Uh, so based on the site plan submitted, it appears that the ATM will be located approximately 55 feet from the curb at the northbound lane of the Berlin Turnpike. Uh, this is because the road reservation of 40 feet between the curb and the property line. And then there will be another 15 feet to the kiosk. So that makes it uh, 55 feet. Um, so with, with the proposed location of the kiosk, 55 feet from the curb at Berlin Turnpike, uh, there seems to be a pretty good distance from the roadway. Um, I would suggest uh, some sort of a buffer if this was to be approved between the line of cars at the curb. Uh, this would, this I suggest would be in the form of um, vegetation or picket fencing. Um, attached to this report was the zoning regulation section 5.4. And there's a site plan showing the proposed location of the ATM and the assessor's map showing the present location of the property. And that's what I have um, for staff report, Mr. Madam Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Morrison. Anybody have a question for Charles? <clears throat> Charles, does this um, have to go also to planning and zoning? 
Is that what was in your staff report? This has to go to the Planning Zone Commission for so after after yeah, but first and foremost, the they, okay. they need to get the variance, yes. Okay. Right. Any other questions for Mr. Morrison? Okay, then we'll move to the applicant. And thank you, Madam Chair. Like to tell us. This is Peter Alter. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Welcome. I'm an attorney. I practiced law in Glastonbury with the firm of Alter and Pearson. Also uh, with us tonight is Kevin Johnson of Close Jensen and Miller and Chris Quinn, who is identified as the representative of the applicant. Um, we do have some slides to use as part of our uh, presentation this evening. Uh, and I would ask Mr. Morrison, can you allow Kevin to have uh, control of that so he can put up the slides? Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, I'm not able to uh, share, yet. share yet, Mr. Morrison. Um, I don't think you can um, share your screen. I don't think you can do that. Is there a way that you could um, project the slide so that it can be seen on the, because I don't think you're able to share the screen, my screen. Yeah, I mean, most times the host is able to allow me to share a screen. Okay, let me see if I can do that. There we go. Can you? I think you can go. Can you? No, still no. not. No. Not able to do so. OK. I'm getting the same message. Uh... That's your cost. The host disabled the attendee screen sharing, is what the message is. All right. No, if, if it was disabled, it was not um, intentionally done. So, no, understood, Mr. Morrison. <laughs> understood. Okay. Trying to see if I can get you to. No. Could I suggest that we maybe we can proceed, on sure. Mr. Alter, fine. with without the slides? We do have a schematic of what All right. your I'll, intention I'll is, to, and try to give you a. Uh, oral or verbal description of what you would have seen. Um, the property at 1862 Berlin Turnpike, which is, as Mr. Morrison reported, zoned as a regional commercial property. Uh, most of you would be familiar with it if I called it the Atlas Tire Tile Building. Mm -hmm. um, there are several other tenants there now, but it is, at least as long as I've been around Weathersfield, the Atlas Tile Company 
has been there with a large sign out on the Berlin Turnpike. Um, your, your question, Madam Chair, was correct. Uh, if this variance is, is granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, it is our intention to proceed with an overall site redevelopment plan that will require uh, not only review by the Planning and Zoning Commission, but also by the Architectural Design Review Committee. Um, so that we would proceed on to uh, that process uh, if we're successful securing a variance. This would be the first step in a process for redevelopment of the entire site. Uh, one of the slides that you're apparently not gonna see tonight is uh, an image prepared by our project architect, Mr. Diamond, showing the complete rehabilitation of the existing building uh, along with the development of the Chase uh, Bank uh, facility at the front of the property. Um, that proposal to redevelop the site is consistent with the Weathersfield Plan of Conservation and Development. Uh, that specifically calls out that properties on the Berlin Turnpike should be encouraged to be redeveloped, to be better developed than they have been in the past, uh, the Atlas Tile building has been there for a long, long time and is uh, would benefit greatly from uh, the redevelopment that is proposed. And by doing that, it would meet uh, a number of community needs. It would encourage redevelopment uh, of a property that is, in, is certainly can benefit from it on the Berlin Turnpike and would also encourage others on the Berlin Turnpike to take the step to uh, make it more amenable to appropriate business development. Those of you who are familiar with the Silestine Highway saw the Chase Bank go in on the corner um, mm -hmm. opposite the Equity Bank building that has been redeveloped into apartments. Um, Chase Bank is expanding its footprint in New England. Uh, they've opened a number of facilities uh, within uh, communities in Connecticut and they've Chase Bank views this as an opportunity to service the west side of Weathersfield and the traveling public on the Berlin Turnpike as it does with its new facility uh, on the Silestine. For those of you who are familiar with that we had a photograph which you're not going to see that shows exactly the way the ATM uh, facility would look with a weather canopy over it. The one that is uh, on the Silestine Highway is exactly what um, this one will look like. Uh, the same signage, same colors, um, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the same presentation of profile. There we go. Thank you, Kevin. Um, thank you, Mr. Morrison. Or maybe this is from Mr. Morrison's exhibits. Yes, this is from my. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is... in this in this slide, uh, this is a blow up of the area where the uh, Chase Bank facility would be located. It um, <clears throat> occupies a very small area. I, I represented in the application that was slightly over uh, 200 square feet. In fact, it's less than 200 square feet. Uh, Close Jensen and Miller did those measurements for me. Uh, since we filed the application. We're only occupying about 189 square feet of the front yard ahead of the building setback line that's established for the regional commercial zone uh, at 25 feet. The um, purpose in, in presenting this is the Chase Bank feels that it's important to provide convenient, visible, accessible banking services. And given what's gone on for the last couple of years, uh, it also ha has committed to providing people with access to banking opportunities without leaving their vehicle and without human contact, that you can conduct your business, your banking business at this ATM um, without having to go through the process of being in a branch bank or, uh, or um, leaving your automobile. 
the uh, site redevelopment that is planned is really hampered by the wide DOT right of way that exists uh, between this property line and the Berlin Turnpike. Uh, I agree with um, Mr. Morrison's measurement of that. It appears to be at least 40 feet wide from the curb of the Berlin Turnpike to our property line. That is a green space that um, will continue to exist. Uh, I think it's reasonable to conclude that the Connecticut Department of Transportation has no immediate or any future plans to ever widen uh, the Berlin Turnpike um, as it has become less of a well-traveled road given the interstate highway system that, that's been developed. Um, so that uh, in effect, there's a 65 foot setback from the Berlin Turnpike. Uh, the 25 required by the regulation and the 40 feet of green space that the DOT controls, uh, we are asking to uh, intrude into that just in the area shown on the plan for the uh, concrete pad, the ATM machine and the canopy to protect uh, customers from the weather that would extend over it. Um, otherwise, there's no other intrusion uh, into the uh, required front yard. Um, based on calculations done by uh, Close Jensen and Miller, as I indicated, our, our entire intrusion is 189 square feet. Our front yard area that we control is 6,307 square feet. And the green space that the DOT controls is over 11,000 square feet. Our occupancy of this front yard amounts to less than 3% of the front yard that, that we control and about 1% of the front yard if you take both the DOT and our uh, front yard together. So that uh, to characterize it as a minimal intrusion, I think is a fair characterization uh, and lends itself to uh, the comfort level of Zoning Board of Appeals and granting uh, such a setback. You have uh, a number of requirements within your regulation uh, for the granting of a variance. And I just want to uh, go over those briefly. Um, first of all, uh, granting the use of approximately less than 200 square feet of the front yard enhances and facilitates the opportunity for the redevelopment of the overall site, which is in accordance with the plan of conservation and development that your town has adopted specifically calling for the redevelopment of properties along the Berlin Turnpike. Since it will utilize less than 3% of the front yard of the property, we feel that it does meet your requirement that this is the minimum relief necessary. It is uh, as slight an intrusion as we can make and still create an appropriate driveway and, and access to the facility as shown on the plan that Mr. Morrison has put up on the screen. Um, this does not afford the applicant any special privilege um, or special opportunity, but rather permits a reasonable minimal use of the front yard uh, in accordance with uh, the intentions of uh, both your plan of conservation and your zoning regulations. Specifically in that regard, I'm referring to section 5.6 of your regulations. Um, Weathersfield is a, is a town that is significantly developed. There is very little empty space left in Weathersfield so that a lot of properties like this one are really candidates for redevelopment as opposed to new development. And your section 5.6 uh, of your zoning regulation recognizes that the redevelopment of a property requires certain flexibility within the regulations. Um, and that uh, having that flexibility 
allows to create substantial, as it's referred to, substantial functional and aesthetic improvements in the overall character of a property. And we think that uh, what Chase Bank proposes to do here uh, accomplishes what's intended by section 5.6 uh, of your regulations and, and can be supported in that regard. Um, creates an opportunity for what is a very well-known, one of the largest banks in the world to continue to be a presence in Weathersfield um, to provide financial services to both Weathersfield residents and uh, the traveling public on the Berlin Turnpike, in addition to facilitating the redevelopment of the site uh, by creating this opportunity uh, as part of that redevelopment. Uh, the redevelopment of the site, the establishment of a new financial business here um, is certainly good for uh, the appearance of the Berlin Turnpike and will encourage others to undertake this kind of investment uh, in the properties on the Berlin Turnpike. And finally, um, we do not believe that uh, this intrusion into the front yard um, causes any public health, safety, or welfare concerns. All of the traffic will be uh, controlled within the site. Uh, this driveway will become a part of the driveway pattern uh, that will exist on the overall site. One of the tenants that is planned for the site is a Starbucks, which will have a drive through facility on one end of the building. Um, all of the parking will be enhanced uh, and redone. We have spent some time on an informal basis with town staff working through uh, the various aspects of this plan. So I think that uh, our applications is supported by both the plan of conservation and development and your zoning regulations. I think that hardship exists given the very wide swath of the DOT property that actually effectively creates a 65 foot setback uh, from the roadway. Uh, and that when we ask to be allowed to intrude into this uh, by about 200 square feet, I think we were asking for a minimal, uh, minimal relief that uh, really creates a great opportunity for the site. Uh, Chris Quinn is uh, available. He's uh, present uh, virtually on this uh, presentation and Kevin Johnson, who is our representative from Close Jensen and Miller is also available if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alter. Any commissioners have Questions for Mr. Alter? Oh, there we are. Yep. Right. <clears throat> Sandra, you're okay. Uh, thank you. Dan? I'm good, thank you. Okay, Matt? I have no questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Morrison, when you said that you would like to see a buffer, it, was there any problem with um, lights in the driveway that would approach the ATM, you know, blinding northbound traffic on the Berlin Turnpike? Was there any safety no, problem I, here? It I, seems like um, it's pretty wide. Yeah, I'm not thinking in terms of any kind of um, light intrusion. intrusion. Okay. I'm just thinking merely just, uh, you know, um, so that, um, the traffic on Berlin Turnpike would not be seeing the traffic that's going into the driveway rather there would be a kind of a some vegetation okay. similar to I think that the property to the north of of the subject property has such a buffer right that's between. a motel of some kind of thing. yeah so I was just thinking I was just thinking that that would probably be so Mr. Uh, Alter if I might there's a if I might, uh, first, as with respect to the lights, we, we would always use dark sky compliant lighting, which mm -hmm. means that, uh, first of all, there's no wash off the site and it's all downward directed. Um, with respect to uh, landscaping, um, those are matters that we will have to present to both the architectural design review that okay. looks at 
building and landscaping, as well as the planning and zoning commission so. as part of the special permit process. Um, uh, certainly the zoning board of appeals could express an interest in that. Um, I, I'm not sure that it, it would be a condition of the granting of a variance. That's all. Yeah, no, I just wanted to make sure that Mr. Morrison didn't have that concern since he mentioned a, a buffer. Understood. All right. Any other commissioners wish to have a question? Right. Is there anybody that wishes to speak in favor of this application? Anyone that wishes to speak against the application? As I said before in our first hearing, anybody else that's on here that wanted to speak? Um, Mr. Morrison, is it appropriate for me to ask if there is one other person on here? They make sure that I'm not ignoring anybody. Sarah, Mike? Yeah, so, okay. Um, there is no other yes, person. Yes, I was, I was gonna comment on the first applicant. Okay, well, one minute, Mike, then. Okay, Mr. Okay. Morrison, is, that, Mike. is that appropriate now for someone to come back in? <laughs> I don't think so. This is okay. My, let's let's cl let's close out. If this there's is no one else for this hearing. Oh, okay. Anyone else for this application? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're going to close the hearing for the second application. I move to close the hearing. Thank you. Second. I have second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The hearing is closed. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Right. Second to that you. motion. Dan. Uh, Dan. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Morrison. Since we don't have an experienced chairperson here, um, do you have an opinion about this person that was here for the first application that did not speak? Oh, was he was he here when the first application was being, and he didn't what? express <laughs> he did not at that time express his desire to speak. No, well, you, I you asked didn't if anybody mention, else was on. You you didn't open the public comment. That's that's why I didn't speak. I waited. Oh, I think I simply said, "Is there anybody else on with us that wants to speak?" Right, right. Because um, I recall um, the chairman also saying that um. Once the hearing is closed, then there will be no more, um, no more. Correct, but you, you never mentioned public comment. That's why I didn't speak because you were you were addressing the the applicant, Mr. Morris. I'm going to let you rule on this. I have no idea. Okay. Would you like to, um, because of that, just reopen it to, so that you can get the comment from this. Person. Sure. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Listen, I, I'll, I'll just make a brief Reopen comment. Reopen first hearing. Out. If not, I won't. Sure. Go ahead, Mike. Could you give um, us your name and address for the record, please? Mike Orsini, 224 Highland Street, Weathersfield. And my partner wasn't uh, able to be here. He's at 260 Prospect Street. Um, his name is Fred Guidabono. He drives the same type truck, like the truck that's there. Um, just to answer um, one of the questions I think um, Sandra had, as for the backup, um, mm -hmm. the backup buttons, I mean, the backup horn, you don't need that under 10,000 KVA. The DOT, the, unless, it, unless it's a commercial vehicle <laughs> that it works on highways, you don't have to have, you don't have to have the backups, uh, the backup horn. I know sometimes people with pickup trucks do have that. Um, you know, regular residential, or they have the with a they do it a lot with the plow trucks just for mm -hmm. safety reasons, but you don't. But, anyways, to my point, um, I'm a contractor in town, I've been in town for over 40 years doing work. Um, I drive a vehicle back and forth, I'm on 24 hour call myself. Um, I understand what's involved, um, with the concerns with neighbors with, with the vehicles, and to, to that extent, um, I do know the applicant. The, I, I do actually I do do work for Dunray Construction, so I'm not going to hide anything here. Um, it is 24 hours. We do get called. I get called. You know, one two o'clock in the morning. I leave. 
I have a van. I also have a shop. I'm in and out um, because of what I do as electrical. I'm in and out more, but I do understand. And um, I'm just in favor of the applicant. And just to, just to let you know that it is one of those things, it, it, it's work related. So that, that, that's all I have. I just, want, I just want to state that for the record. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We're going to reclose that hearing. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Mr. Morrison, would it be appropriate to make a motion to um, move the order of our meeting? Um, and of course, and sure. Do the second one first. Sure, sure, you can do that. Okay, so so I move we um, move to our the public meeting to discuss application six two five eight two two, the variance from section three point six to allow a standalone ATM kiosk fifteen feet from the front property boundary as against twenty five feet required. I'd like to move to do that first. <clears throat> Anyone second? I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, aye. Okay, so move. <clears throat> all right, any discussion? Dan? No, I make a motion to accept the application as submitted. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's vote then. <clears throat> all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the application <clears throat> passes for firm affirming votes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Alter, Mr. Quinn, Mr. Johnson. <clears throat> Thank you. Good night. Okay, good night. Bye. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna open the public meeting. Uh, to discuss application number 6257-22, special exemption, uh, except for section 3.5.1A5 to allow commercial vehicle not compliance with section 3.55.A, um, the zoning regulations to be parked on residential property at 89 Prospect Street. <clears throat> Discussion? Mike, um, Matt? No, I think I'm all set here. Okay, Dan. No, as long as the, I guess as long as the vehicle is going to be parked, tucked away, I don't have an issue um, with it being where it is. Um, it's going to be tucked away mm -hmm. um, far enough where you, it's not going to cause a sight line from Prospect Street or for this current side street either. Sandra? Your largest investment is your home. And 36 years ago, I moved into my home. I'm a single parent. So my approach was to put all the money I had into my house so I'd have a roof over my head and my son's head. Little did I know, 22 years ago, a neighbor's son would start a landscaping business and bring home a dump truck. That was 22 years ago. We went before this board. He was denied the application and it has been a living hell. I have to put up with the noises. I have to put up with the drive truck in the driveway, going across my front lawn, backing over my front lawn. I've had to put cameras on my house to protect my house. I cannot approve this application. I don't believe anybody should have to put up with commercial vehicles or the sight of them in their neighborhood. These are residential. So I cannot support it, no matter what stipulations are put there. Um, I'd like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, so you can't say anything, okay. I'm sorry. I, I do wanna say that I think every, we are going to take every application separately. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm certainly sorry that you've had such a <clears throat> difficult time with someone parking a commercial vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the code does allow for certain commercial vehicles to be parked, whether some of us you know, like that or not. But this one, <clears throat> does not fit the um, zoning regulations in, in several ways, you know, as Mr. Morrison said, it, it's too big, has too many signs. Um, and <clears throat> so, uh, you know, in trying to be very fair, I took out the code and if we go through it, 
um, mm -hmm. for special exemptions, um, it does say that we should consider as a commission uh, the intended use. So I do have some, and this is for discussion between uh, among the four of us to come back in if you, you know, want to, to discuss this. Is the intended use now is going to be at all hours, and that kind of concerns me. Um, that that this could happen. I'm glad it doesn't have <laughs> backup alarms, but um, it it does mean moving in and out, like lights and, and bulbs. I think and, it's a um, and also it says to take in consideration the hours of operation of the vehicle. And again, um, I think that is a concern because I mean it's great that this this person is willing to go out at all times and help in emergencies, but it does mean that that vehicle is the hours of operation, I think are can be of a concern. Um, the next one says the um, other vehicles on the property. There's already four vehicles in that in that uh, driveway, um, plus the truck would be there, and then the character of the neighborhood. And now, Mr. Alter, in the other uh, hearing, spoke several times of the plan of conservation and development, and the plan of conservation and development is is pretty explicit that Weathersfield is a residential town. And I think as such, you know, I, we have fairly broad zoning on commercial vehicles. So when one doesn't fit even those, I do have, I do have concerns about, about that. It doesn't mean that I'm not sympathetic to this person who's working and, and has a job and, and it certainly makes it more convenient for them and as the letter said, and less costly for them, but it does then impose their convenience on the neighborhood. Um, and I know that you know one one person complained, and maybe Mr. Morrison is the same person, but that doesn't doesn't really make any difference. It's kind of like we had this discussion before, um, Matt. I don't think you were part of the commission at that time, but we had a discussion about the fact that just because there aren't um, viewpoints against doesn't mean that they're not out there. It's very difficult for someone mm -hmm. to speak against an application when it's your neighbor who that you like a lot. It's a wonderful person. So I, I'm conf conflicted as I often am here, but... Mm -hmm. Dan or Matt, I mean, you know what Sandra thinks, so. Any other comments? No? I do not right. know. No, not a, I already stated my comment. Okay, yeah. All set then? Anyone else have anything? Um, <clears throat> Mr. Morrison, is yes. it possible to um, grant this application with a stipulation, for instance, and, and I can't ask the applicant anything right now, but um, this person who's driving the truck doesn't have another mode of transportation and that she would have to drive him to and from work and pick him up if he had to go in the middle of the night. Is it something we could put a time limit on so this person could Save up, get a car, get something um, to drive back and forth. Uh, is it something we can give him or her? I'm sorry, it doesn't know who it is. Him or her permission to keep the truck for a period of six months, or whatever. Okay, um, I guess you could do that. It's up to the board. I guess you could. All right, I didn't know if that was. Yeah. I guess you could put that. Yeah. What would anybody think of that? Let's see what the other commissioners would think Sandra? about the thing. No. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of tough to answer that, not knowing their intent. 
because we didn't ask it during open well open form um, um you that's know, true but it certainly would give them a chance then to to do what and if that was stipulation was on there mr morrison could they then come back in that period of time they certainly can come back to the board of appeals even if you deny this um application they could come back within six months that's six with six they months could come so back for, for if we said they could park the truck for six months and hopefully figure out some alternative means of transportation for this person at the end of six months they could come back i'm confused that true? One, so yeah. No, so I, I'm, I'm just. Are you suggesting now that uh, they are able to have the car there for six months, and then I, can you just? Uh, uh, what are you? Uh, yeah. yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think I. I, I was just I'm wondering just as some kind of a a compromise here, you know, whether. Um, the truck could be allowed to be parked there for a specific period of time, which might allow an alternative means of transportation to be gotten by this person. And then the truck would have to be parked at Dunright. Dunright has a place of operation on Hamilton Street in Hartford. You know, I'm sure they're paying, I don't know where their taxes are going. That's probably not our concern, but somebody's paying taxes on that yeah, truck. Um... It's being parked here. It's being housed here. I'm not sure we're getting the taxes on it, but uh, you know, and after six months, if he still wants to park it there, he's got to come back, and then the application is maybe perhaps denied altogether. I don't know. It's perhaps a, a moot point, but there's only four of us, so it's got to be four. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other discussion? My. My my suggestion, though, Mister, I would either deny it outright or um, okay, or approve it. I would not. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna close the meeting. Anybody else have anything to say, Sandra? No. All set. Matt. I'm all set. Dan. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um. I don't know how to set, make this motion. Um, anyone want to make a motion? Sandra? No? All right. Um, so we'll make a motion to approve the application. We'll vote. If one person votes against, then um, it's not approved. So, all right. So we're going to take a vote on the application. All in favor? I'm, I'm in favor. I'm All right, favor. Dan is a yes. Matt's a yes. I, I'm going to say no. Say no. Okay. So the application is denied. The, how did they vote? Did, did somebody make a motion? I made a motion to accept the application. Right. Who did? And to uh, Rita. 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 Okay. Rita. And who seconded that? Dan. I did. Minutes. I did. Dan. Dan second. Dan. All right. Thank you. Dan and Matt were I. Yes. Rita and Sandra. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. The meeting is closed. Mm -hmm. And we'll proceed to the next item on the agenda. Um, I wasn't at the December meeting. Do we even, do you send out minutes? I so um, for the December minutes, uh, that was not, um, we did not have a recording secretary at the time, Madam Chairman. So as such, we did not um, have a minute prepared for that meeting. Okay, so we're not gonna do that. No. Okay, other business. Is there anyone, there's nobody else on at the moment, any public comment? Commissioners, any other business? Can I ask a question? 
So my application has it been denied completely? Like been denied? It's been denied with a vote yes. of two and two? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, um, so it means that you, within 10 days, you have to seize the parking of the vehicle and the property. Okay. I, I am gonna say that I am disappointed. I am very disappointed, especially when you drive around Weathersfield and see car after car, tractor trailers parked in driveways Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, part of me says, you know, people are just trying to make a living, which is great. But in the meantime, you see tow trucks and, and Cox cable trucks. Mm -hmm. but, and, and Sandra, I'm very sorry, very sorry for what you're going through with your neighbor. I'm very sorry. And believe me, I understand what it's like to be a single mom. I did it with three kids and my driveway was always like a game of Jenga with cars. That's why <laughs> I kind of laughed at that a little bit. We were, we're always moving cars around, but. So uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Sorsini, I think this is good. And I think that should be part of public comment. Time. Okay, no, I mean, I I think we'll put that in public comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cindy, mm -hmm. that's part of public comment. That, <clears throat> because I do think you're correct about other yes. cars, other yes. trucks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, I'm good. Mr. Morrison, I have a, oh, I'm sorry, somebody? No, I'm good. Okay. Mr. Morrison, I have a question. Um, I wasn't at the December meeting, so I had asked you for an update on um, 82 Wilkett Hill Road. Um, oh. And I just wondered what's hey. happening there. Um, Matt, you weren't here. It's, um, it's down by, the little supermarket on Wilkett Hill Road. Um, it's the chiropractor. There's a building on the right hand side as you go towards Hartford <clears throat> that has temporary structures up in the back that we denied they're still up. And they're still up. I just wondered uh, what's happening. There. Yeah, that was denied. Um, we, I sent him a notice, he ignored it. So I th what I did was to send a citation out. Mm -hmm. And um, first notice for the citation he, he did not um contest it or anything he did not uh, request a hearing or anything so i'm going to send the second one out and then he will be required to pay the 100 dollars a day fine um as to the removal of the structures uh we have to figure out the town now has to figure out how we go about doing this because we can't let it stay there forever and then but the, at the same time, the fines are increasing at $100 per day. He had contacted the Planning and Zoning Commission with a view to seek a zone change, but um, they had a pre-application meeting and um, he has not followed up with the application. But he seems to think that because he made the pre-application and because he has that intention of applying for the zone change, he could still keep that, he could have that there until such time, but it's not so. He's been fined a hundred dollars per day. So does he think that the fact that he put in the pre-application that the fines are not collectible, that he doesn't have to pay those hundred dollars a day? I guess so, but that's, but, um, but that's I, not sent true. Him, I sent him a letter, <laughs> I sent him let you know, I sent him a citation. Yeah. So he, and I said that you're being accrued $100 per day. You know, but I mean, I guess he figures that because he's doing that. that not that it's not, a, but that we should we should um, not follow through. We should should buy our time, but we can't do that because the decision has been made that he can't mm -hmm. have uh, the um, he can't have the structures there. Okay. And even if he goes through to the planning and zoning commission and he gets the zone change, he still will be owing these finds that has accrued up until the time that he gets the zone change. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Anything else? Okay. All right. Um, are, are you so glad there's you just came one back? more there's just one more thing though. Um 
we are i'm sorry Ms. madam chairman to cut you no, off no you go ahead that's we had um we have a situation where the chairman has um resigned so i think we need to formally at some point in time elect the chairman and um vice chairman or you know and um so on so maybe we could schedule that for another meeting i think we need to have well, any right or here. not not necessarily yeah. scheduled but whenever we have a yeah. full house we could probably yeah. um consider doing that are there currently so, any vacancies on this um yes yes well no. well no not really not really no, we have I, we have oh matt have, became you took my I place that's a lot of right yeah we have okay. five we have five full members yeah and we have three alternates. And we have yeah. three alternates. Okay. We have, a, we have an alternate that has been appointed since, um, if you ask me, probably a year. Oh, it hasn't been here at all. We have not seen his face. We don't know what he looks like. Okay. <laughs> um, there, there is a procedure. I mean, really, when I, we got when I got my letter of appointment, it says right in there, if you miss three in a row, you just you're not <laughs> three strikes and you're out yeah right. yeah i mean you know i'm obviously there are extenuating circumstances if something of happens course. but yes um mm -hmm. and when you sent out are we going to be um in person next time um that's a good question we we i i think if if i'm understanding the town manager correctly you could decide what you want to do. Um, there's a point in time when it was said that all meetings will be virtual. Then, um, I mean, we'd be virtual. And then we had a virtual meeting in, um, in, the, in October. Then November we had uh, in person. Then we had one in December. Person? And now, right. And now we are having... Um, this virtual one, but I mean, I, if the if the commission wants to go to in person, we can. It's all up to you if we want. If you want to, do we have any pending cases for March? Yes, yes. we have received one application for March. Okay. So um, you could decide if you want that to be in person or virtual. Do, do you want to just send something out to everybody since there's so few of us here and see you you want to there's i mean i i'm okay with with virtual i'm okay with either i don't really care in person let's just do it virtually. i this. mean personally personally i pref i think virtual is the way to go at this point in time because i in my opinion what we're doing is going from virtual to in person and i don't think we've gotten over this we've fully gotten to a point with this covid that we can say okay you know, we can go straight in person. We're skip, we're upping and skipping from in person to virtual to in person. I would rather we do virtual for another couple of months and see what happens down the line. If you want to take a vote at the next meeting when we have more people, I don't know. Well, why don't we stay virtual for March and not go farther out than that? So at the, at the March I meeting, at the March, okay at the yeah, March virtual. meeting, we'll decide. We'll decide. Do you want then to do that? Decide. At the March meeting, we'll decide what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Going yeah, forward. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. When you sent out the Zoom invitations, and we reply. So like when I looked at it today, only four of us had a re no, four. I four guess. people. Yes. Well, Joanne had originally had said she was coming too, I guess. Four people had replied, so, including John. But Joe, yes. But yeah. Joanne had okay. an issue with her flight being right. delayed and everything like that. So, okay. Jim sent an email saying he was on hold for or in the waiting room for 15 minutes. Oh. That happened to me last time. Really? Yeah. I saw oh. an email and he, pop and up. And he left after, after 15 minutes. He left. Oh, okay. 
See, he hadn't responded, so I didn't think he was coming. Right. He he hadn't responded, and I, no. I I'm you know didn't see yeah. him in the waiting room. So yeah. yeah, that is a problem with the Zoom thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next next time we're going to be on one. Zoom. Maybe one alternative is that all the commissioners log in 15 minutes early or 10 minutes to, early. Yeah, I, I mean, try to wait. Yeah. Because it's, you know, we wait, we wait, and I'm like, oh, did they forget about me? Right. Poor Charles, I called him tonight. So I'm here. I'm I don't know if that makes it easier for you, Charles, but 10 minutes before, if you could log in all the commissioners and then let everyone else, the applicants, let them. Well, I don't, I don't want to put it on the commissioners to be here before the time, you know. Well, I, yeah, I don't know if that's easier five minutes before. That, but, um... Yeah. Well, we end up waiting ten at the other, you know, to get started. So. I, I was having a little glitch here. Um, it's the first time I'm doing this from my. I'm actually in the office now. So I'm doing this from my work computer. It's the first time I'm setting it up for this, because mm -hmm. all along I didn't use my work computer for this because I didn't have the webcam, and there's a slight. It's something went wrong, it just wouldn't start up. So um that's probably my fault right there. So but um what I'll do is try and try I'll try in the future to for me, I will try to come on at least 15 minutes before so that way I no one will have to wait and then disappear. Okay. Um, okay. Thank okay. you. All right, anybody else? All right, great. Thank you. Great. Thank nice you. To meet you Matt. Okay. All right, everyone. Okay. All right. Good night, Good night everyone. Sandra, um, did you say something? Yeah, motion to adjourn. Um, oh, yeah, we have to motion to adjourn. Just can't say goodbye. <laughs> motion Second. to adjourn. Good, Good night, everyone. All in favor. Aye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Night. Good night.